we had the privilege to pack it on up and head up to Kentucky to hunt with Harold Knight of Night and Hail. The Pawn Shop Shotgun, presented by the National Wild Turkey Federation and Out Here Co. We're up in Kentucky hunting with Harold Knight of Night and Hail. We didn't hear much at first light except for one gobbler way off. We saw three toms up on the hill just loafing around. We had to wait them out, and before we knew it, they were in the field. There's three toms. Yeah, they're still just sitting there. One of them strutting to the right. This is this. Hey, come on. Look at that thing. Look at That's the pumps. reason they so hard to fool with this morning. Them's old turkeys. Those are old birds. And you notice that Jake? He was learning. He was he? learning. Yeah. He's gonna be a tough one to kill yeah. next yes, year. Yes, sir. Well, we waited him out, and he came on down that ridge, didn't he? You know what? We heard a turkey gobble early this morning, Jay, and I said, that's the turkey we're going to get. You know, we's hunting out of a blind. That's not the way I like to hunt. But on a situation, we had three of us, two cameras, and uh, I knew it was going to be tough to get out there, even though the leaves had come out the last week to where you could hide better. True. But uh, we, that turkey never showed up. We got to doing a little calling, next thing we know, Three more showed up. I didn't even know they was there. I had no earthly idea they was in the country. That just shows you that uh, many years I've been turkey and I still don't know nothing. So, but anyway, we had a, I, that was a good hunt. You know, they come to that field, a little pretty little clover field, and they came down and uh, done their thing in that little field. If you look, uh, every, every one of them keep their head up looking. They had two hen decoys out up that field. They was looking at them. They was keeping an eye on what they Oh, doing. yeah. But that, that was a great hunt, you know, and, and that you shotgun here. Hey, you reached out there and touched him I at 50 tell you yards. What I, done, I put uh, a two and three quarter inch tungsten shell in that sucker and his little apex shell. And I tell you what, it knocked him a flip. He was graveyard dead. And that, that's pretty impressive, you know. I don't like shooting him that far, but most of the time, the way you got your shells and guns now, that's, that's not a real hard shot, especially in open field. And if you remember, I said, 
I'm going to make him stick his head way up. I'm not going to shoot him. And sure enough, he, he stretched he, way up he there. He stretched way up. But another thing he did, he got away from the other gobblers. At that distance, they're close together, you can kill more than one. I definitely didn't want to do that. So we looked out there. Yeah, uh, we definitely looked out, and, you know, he stuck his head up for you, and you just yeah. you smoked him. But uh, anytime you have a successful turkey hunt, at the end of the season, you you, you know, that's, that's good. You know, uh, this is about 30 or 40 days I've hunted in a row just about, and uh, I've been blessed to have a good season, and the people with me has killed lots of turkeys. Uh, I don't get to shoot turkeys. I, I, to, to me, that's an uh, honor this morning for me just to get the, the pleasure to get to shoot that turkey. I'm usually watching people shoot turkeys. And uh, and I tell you, I was impressed with uh, you, and I was, I was also impressed with Peyton this morning. Y'all y'all both could use a camera. And at one time, I noticed he couldn't see the turkey. Yep. He had that camera to you, he and you went to, to another place. and picked him up and that might have been the reason we killed that turkey yeah because i don't yeah. know if they were really going to necessarily come all the way no, in and they, then you, you saw know, him and you're like hey you i can kill him there. that turkey had a, he was a four and a half five year old turkey and i'm telling you those turkeys right there have been through it they've heard calling and they just don't come running to everything now i noticed that something happens at the end of the season a lot of times on these turkeys they will split up a lot of time and they'll get back together and these turkeys are getting back together. Yeah, they are. They're grouped up back. Grouped back up. And uh, I'm not. I do not like to shoot two and kill two at one shot. We just don't have that many turkeys. To, no. Uh, I, somebody else can enjoy them other two all. For sure. The seasons old. Cause I bet their spurs is that long too. Yeah, I, I was looking I at them. I was watching them, and there's one of them had another good yeah. set of spurs on them. And they had one uh, juvenile gobbler there, and he's uh, getting an education. He is. Yeah. He's going to be a tough one to hunt. Oh, he's going to be tough. The whole reason, you know, we're doing this project is for turkey conservation, you know, taking this old gun around and hunting with everybody, and you being a legend that you are in the hunting community, I really appreciate you letting us come up and hunt with it, but why is turkey conservation important, and how, as turkey hunters, do we play a role in that? You know, we play a big role in it. You know, uh, I've been a member of the National Wild Turkey Federation probably ever since he started. And uh, I'm for anybody or any organization that's to help the wild turkey. And it's lots of people out there, a lot of your state agencies is helping them. It's a lot of other people's helping them. But the National Wild Turkey Federation has took the bull by the horn and it seems to uh, do a lot for conservation and awareness of the turkey and what we need to do. And we got a lot of work to do. You know, I'm hearing different little areas in the United States, Turkey are down. But we need to work on that. And, you know, I know here in my state of Kentucky, we've got some areas that we don't have the turkey we had a few years ago, but in some of the areas we got more than we had a few years ago. So we need to work on everything that we can to have more wild turkey. True, true, yeah. for sure, for sure, because we want to be able to have those for like, you know, if I'm blessed to have kids, I want to be able to take my kids and then they're the next generation, you know, to be able to go out and steal turkey hunt. Uh, one of my goals is to take somebody new every year and kill the first turkey. I've had the opportunity to do that literally hundreds of times, and I mean hundreds of times. Last year I had four new turkey hunters to kill the first. This year I only had two, but one of them was my great-grandson, seven years old, killed his first turkey. Now I have stamped him for the rest of his life to be a turkey hunter. There you and go. I hope I hope it, that he is. And he got to see a, a wild turkey come up and do things that most people don't get to see. And he really enjoyed it. He had a little 410 with a little uh, Vortec sco a dot scope on it. And he shot that turkey. Boy, I mean, I was tickled to death for him. There you go. That's And that's why we do it. That's why we do it. That's exactly right. And I appreciate you, sir, so much for yes, sir. letting I, us I come up and hunt with you and signing the gun and getting the turkey with it. Well, I enjoyed it. What you do, I hope you know that. Awesome. I appreciate it. If you wanted to know how you can start being a part of turkey conservation, you can join the National Wild Turkey Federation or renew your current membership. Through your membership, you'll also be entered to win this signed pawn shop shotgun. Be sure to check out the link below for details on how to enter to win.